Back in the day, people had to go to a priest and say, please, Father, forgive me for I have sinned. Can you talk to God for me and make sure he forgives me? And the priest would say, sure, I can talk to God for you, but that's going to cost you about $50, $25 or whatever they had in their pockets. Give me that. That'll work. What if I told you that your right to vote and speak freely was rooted in a historic moment when one man risked his life to stand up to the largest institution of his time so that you and I could have the freedoms we have today. I'm Robert Nichols and today's video is entitled, If You Don't Vote, You Don't Matter. And I entitled the video that way because folks really need to understand the origins of where the right to vote came from. And I believe if you start to understand your history and understand the origins of voting, you'll start to look at the political system very differently than most people look at it today. This story starts back in 1517 when a guy by the name of Martin Luther, and I'm not talking about Martin Luther King, I'm talking about a priest named Martin Luther was fed up and tired of the Catholic Church taking advantage of poor people by forcing them to pay to be forgiven for their sins, guys. Yes, back in the day, people had to go to a priest and say, please, Father, forgive me for I have sinned. Can you talk to God for me and make sure he forgives me? And the priest would say, sure, I can talk to God for you, but that's going to cost you about $50, $25 or whatever they had in their pockets. Give me that. That'll work. You know what I mean? And so, you know, this was a crazy time, a crazy era where folks weren't educated, most folks were illiterate, and they really wanted to do the right thing. And they would just essentially listen to the priests and the monarchs who also told them they need to talk to priests or monarchs could go to the priests for them. And they would get Nick cut of this money and everyone was all in, in on it and taking advantage of the people. And Martin Luther was a priest who got tired of this. He saw this happening. He saw folks taking advantage of people and he had enough. And he wasn't the only one, but he was the first to speak up. And so he wrote a paper called the 95 Thesis, and it was 95 points that he basically posted on the church. And ultimately, he believed that, and again, this is biblical, right? He believed what the Bible said about people being able to speak to God freely. You could, you could pray and God would hear your prayers and answer your prayers if you walked and lived by faith. And so in him living and walking by faith, you know, he wrote this paper to really inform people uh, that they could do this. And something else that allowed this to happen and get spread throughout Europe was it was the invention of the Gutenberg press that could actually recreate these sheets that he had written and litter them all over Europe. And this led to the Reformation, guys. The biggest thing, and again, we're gonna get into the voting, guys, but I want you guys to understand the history here and the context. Martin Luther, to sum up his philosophy and beliefs, I'm gonna read Romans 1.17. I'm reading from the New International Version. It says, for in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. And this verse really reflects Luther's core belief that salvation is granted by faith alone, not by works, not by payments, and not by the church. And so because he believed this, he was compelled to write the 95 Thesis and teach people that they could go direct to God, that they could pray and God would hear their prayers and answer their prayers, guys. And while this may not sound controversial today, what do you think the priests and the monarchs did when this happened? They put a bounty on his head. They decided enough was enough. This man is spreading too much truth and we need to put a stop to it because why? He's messing with our pockets, right? And so because he was messing with their pockets, messing with their money, folks were upset and decided to try to kill him. But thankfully he had some friends in high places as well. And so some princes in Germany decided to take pity on him. They hid him and he was able to live the rest of his life, spread the truth, Throughout Europe, this spread to England from starting in Germany, spread to England, Italy, and all over the place, Portugal. And folks started getting out of control, led to civil wars. And, you know, for the next hundred years, it was pretty wild and pretty crazy until folks like John Locke came around and other philosophers and political figures decided <clears throat> that we needed to find a way to allow people to participate in the political process, for people's voices to be heard, and allow folks to start shaping policy in their local and national communities. And so as a result of folks understanding that they didn't need the priests or the monarchs anymore to talk to God, they needed to find a way to make people equal under the law, right? All men had to be equal because again, they could go to God and they didn't need a priest. They didn't need that in intermediary. And this is where folks started talking about voting and democracies and all right, now it's time for us to figure out how to allow people to participate locally. And so it initially started with only men being given the right to vote, and particularly white men in Europe. And over time, as we know, if we look at our history, women started to get fed up with this. And so what happened next? 
Women like Susan B. Anthony and Emmeline Pankhurst stepped it up in the UK, Susan B. Anthony in the US, and fought for women to have the right to vote. But they didn't stop there. You know, now we still had slavery happen in the United States, and ultimately we had the Civil War, and African Americans fought for their right and died for their right to vote. And so I feel like a lot of folks take this for granted because we don't go back far enough to really understand the origins of voting and the power that we have to shape policy, primarily in our local communities. I know we have a, a presidential election coming up soon, but either way, the power to vote really is most effective when we use it to shape local policy. And if we look at local policies, I think lately that have really failed us as a society, I'm talking about local policing, a lot of folks get all up in arms looking at all oh, the police, there's racism happening, there's uh, all types of issues with these police stations, we need to defund the police. But that really isn't the root of the problem, guys. You see, when an issue happens at a local level, you have to start looking up the chain of command and find the first local official who is an elected official. And in most cases, that is your mayor. And so when the police have failed the community, it isn't the police's fault. Yeah, it is bad people everywhere. It's your mayor's fault because they put a commissioner in power who now is allowing this stuff to permeate and happen in your community while folks in your family or your loved ones or other folks out here feeling unprotected because they failed you. And so what do you do when someone fails you? You fire them. But it's crazy. When I saw the whole BLM movement happening, you really didn't see many cases where they were calling for the mayor to resign. And really, the mayors would jump in and support BLM and everything else. But the reality is they're the ones guilty of the crime, in my opinion, because they're the ones who allowed that to happen under their watch. And so instead of getting angry and yelling and protesting in the streets and thinking that is where your power is best served, look up, look to the elected official and make a change. Get them out of power. Get someone in there that represents your interests, someone that you trust. And if you do that, I promise you that you will see change if you start participating locally. If you look at guys like Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and even JFK, all of these guys were assassinated and killed because they understood how power worked. They understood the power of the polls. And so if you can mobilize a group of people to have a unified voice, a collective voice, and to move all in the same direction, the most powerful institutions of your time will fear you guys. And so this is why I'm putting this video out there so that folks really understand the origins of voting, the origins of equal rights, and the power that lies in your hands if you decide to use it and you know how to use it, right? And so my, I feel it's my responsibility to teach you how to use it, but it's your responsibility to actually do something with it, guys. As I close today, I want you to know that your vote is your voice and your power. Remember, if you don't vote, you don't matter. So make your voice count in every election, especially in your local communities. Stay tuned for more.